Um, David is, has unloaded the kill this morning, and we're going to show you a few pots from the firing. This is uh, my work, and uh, if David tells me to pick it up, I will. Otherwise, I'll leave it down. You can see the carving and the slip trailing, and you can see the multiple layers of glaze. Here's, here's another one. I don't know if you can see the detail on the carving. Yeah, you can see it pretty well. Okay. Here's a couple more. This one's kind of pretty on the back. This one's got some Aribe in it on this in this margin here. And it's Timaku out here. The Aribe is the green glaze, and the right. Timaku is a dark brown glaze. And then the center is a an iron or a copper red glaze. With a little bit of uh, something brushed over the top of the blue. What is the blue? Uh, I think that's DC blue. DC blue. That's another glazed syringe on it. This one is uh, stoneware, and it's got some alterations, a little twist, the funky stuff. David did a demo on salsa dishes that I, I used his idea and then made a few of these. This one was fun. This, this glaze on the outside area has got kind of a fun story. One of our potter, potters, one of our friends is a potter named David Farron. He mismixed a batch of glaze about five years ago, and I bought the bucket from him. So this is David Farron's Miss Bad Blue. <laughs> and then there's a few pots that I've made. Here's one that was in a video before. It was called the Tall Vase. And that's it after it's been decorated. It shrank a lot. That's probably about 14 inches tall now. I, it was, I don't know what it was, 16 or 17 before. So it shrank quite a bit. And there's a little teapot, like I've shown you before. And some kind of Groovy-esque kind of base. Groovy is, is the name of a company that was uh, did American art pottery back in the uh, early 1900s till about 19... 20 something late 20s I believe and there's a little jar that I did with a similar kind of uh, design on it as far as the floral things are concerned and I do a lot of detail work if you can see the little stems and the leaves and things like that one of these days I will do a video on that somebody asked me to and I'd be glad to do that it takes a while to do it but uh, I give you the idea how the flowers and the leaves are made this is one of my favorites. This one, you can see he's put all the flowers on it, but one of the cool things I think about this one is it's flattened. You can see it's actually an oval if you look at it from this end. And on the sides, he's got all this wonderful detail going down the sides. Yeah, and, and lately I've started making these more three, or, or all sided. They're, of course, three dimensional, but I used to leave the, the back just kind of blank, but it's it's a sort of evolving into sculpture pieces. So I thought, well, you know, sculpture should have all sides. You should be able to walk around it and enjoy all the sides of it, not just the front. So that's why it's got more. Now it's just leaves. But I keep that simple because if they put it up against a wall, they don't want them to hit the flowers and, and break it. So that's why that's done like that. There's a little piece of with a, a dog on it stretched over the top. Mary says it looks like our dog. It does. It's our dog, Grace. See the little <laughs> face? Let's see. Let's zoom in on the little face. It's hard to see it. <laughs> and here's a few uh, other pots with just showing you the glazes. I, the glazes are unusual that in that they uh, came out differently this time because it, the kiln cooled a lot faster. I didn't pull the damper in quite enough. There was probably open about a half an inch. First time I've ever done that but it dramatically affects the firing, so uh, th that is the result. So, so it's not just the way the kiln's fired, and as the temperature goes up, the amount of reduction in oxidation and time and so on, but the cooling really affects the, the, re the end result of the way the glazes look. I, I don't, they don't look bad, but they, they're really very different than normal. This is a copper red, along with a, uh, another glaze on the, on the edge. And the other glaze on the edge, the blue glaze on the edge, really bleached out because I think of the rapid cooling. And here's a few other little pieces. Here's a little kind of arts and crafts type base, kind of bulbous at the bottom. I do a lot of handles on things. 
another one with some blue and different colors of blue on top. So that is the result of the firing, the kind of mistake <laughs> that I did. We're going to a show at San Diego Potter's Guild uh, in a couple, a few days, at the end of this week. Today's Monday. And uh, there's a little base that I did. And I kind of like the negative space from that handle. And here's some pots that uh, my assistant, Evan Lopez, did. He threw all these big pots for me. And I did some carving on them. So they're just, they're planters. But planters are good too. There's a market for them for sure. And they're kind of fun to make. And these will be fired stacked together. It's like you see here. And even more of them, some of the smaller planters will be put inside there. So usually I do a nest of five planters or so. So that makes a kind of efficient way to fire them because the interior of a planter isn't glazed. And uh, that way you can get quite a few in just a small space. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching the video. We'll see you later. Bye. And here we are outside. This is the rest of the firing. I just thought I'd show you. There's quite a few pieces that fit in the firing. And here's Evan that I just mentioned a minute ago. Yeah. He's, uh, Say good morning, Evan. David, morning. show his face. He's I so did show his face. And he's sanding the pots. They all have to be sanded when they come out of the kiln. <clears throat> so he's doing that, getting them ready. And then they'll be priced and then boxed up and taken uh, taken off to the show. So, Evan, how long have you been working at the studio? I've been working here for almost three years now. Have you and, learned anything yet? And I owe a lot of my admiration and love for pottery to David and Mary Cusick because they let me work here and make everything, and let me do everything that I need to get done. Great. <laughs> He's a big help to us. That's it.